gang's all here. And uh, when we get into summertime and vacations and all this, uh, a lot of times uh, we go a long period of time without everybody being here together. But uh, we're all back now, and uh, glad you're with us. Reach us at 866-WE-BE-BIG. If you're just joining us, look at show notes. We discussed a number of things in the, in the first uh, couple of hours of the show today. And uh, so we've hit some of the big headlines. We'll get back into some of that. Coming up, too, uh, I know there's some, some big <laughs> stories from uh, from this past week, too, that we haven't covered yet. And we definitely want to chat with you guys. Um, I know that uh, I, I, I was off in, in southern France this last week, and I have been to the future. Huh. Uh, and I've come back to talk to my country, and, and, and I, I can't stress this enough. It, it, it's real, real serious. But um, All right, so first of all, as I was uh, told uh, – in broken English, from a, a Frenchman in the southern part of France, which is kind of the countryside, the villages. Your well, we always hear the south of France. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. south of France. Yeah, this, this, is of France. France. this is where you have, by the way. Yeah. Is that it, where the Riviera part is? And that, well, we were, we were inland a little bit from that, but you're headed in that direction. Uh, this is your villages, your, uh, your farmers, uh, your. How's the roads? Not very good. Uh, very tiny. Tiny and, and, and very twisty and very turny. I mean, you're, it's very hilly and mountainous. They didn't have the Truman Interstate deal going. No, uh, they did not. And, and and some of the things they call two lane roads, I would have to disagree. Now you <laughs> now, now you do know they ride on the same Eisenhower side. Eisenhower Interstate. They, they ride on the same side of the road we do. Oh right. right, they're not on the other side. Okay. Well, both yeah. of us changed just to be opposite the Brits. Yeah. Now look at this. They look a lot of forts, a yeah. lot of a uh-huh. lot of castles, a lot of conquering. Uh, I think of, it was some wars fault right there. You think some arrows went over yeah, the top of yeah, that right yeah, a lot, there? A lot, of, a lot of arrows, a lot of ramparts, uh, that uh, old cathedrals, which I'll get into here in a minute because that's part of me going to the future. <laughs> um, and uh, so a lot of that. Now, we were there as uh, as guest of Fixed Point Foundation. Y'all have heard Larry Talton on the show. He's been Brendan here during uh, you know the, the debates that have gone on with John Lennox and others. Uh, that's uh, Larry and I drinking sweet tea every afternoon, which he – has the staff there make because it does not exist uh, in, in southern <laughs> France. So we came in and got a glass of iced tea every day after we were out, you know, looking at the future. But uh, so um, and what they're doing there, they actually have a um, – it's like a – it's called La Bastide. It's like a French um, chateau that uh, – these things are huge. You know, they have all these different rooms and whatever. And uh, they're, they've, they've got an office there now. They have an office uh, in Birmingham, Alabama, but they also have an office there. And uh, they're starting the inaugural next week, uh, what is called the uh, Fixed Point Foundation uh, Institute, Institute of Apologetics. And what they're, what they're offering is you can go there as a high school student, a college student, and you can actually train and go through classes. They'll bring, you know, sometimes Lennox over from, from Oxford. John Lennox has been on. He'll, he'll teach a class. Uh, like next week they've got another guy who is kind of on the front lines right now uh, taking on uh, – the attempt of Islam to take over France and, you know, and, you know, already in Europe, nobody wants to talk about it, but already in Europe, and it's kind of the, let's not talk about that. There are communities that are completely under Sharia law right now. Yes. It's kind of not talked about and the police don't go there and everybody kind of leaves them alone. They're already developing their own little countries inside the country. And, and, and that is, that is going on. Like some spots in Michigan. <laughs> right. Very similar. So come out in the future, Rick. Uh, right. So I just want you to know in the future, <laughs> the Sharia law thing is very, very real. Uh, so, of course, you know, you'd be passive on it, and they just look at that as you being weak. They don't shake your hand and say, hey, thanks for being so nice. Uh, but anyway, so, um, so that's kind of – and you can go there, and, the, and there's like a Christian heritage tour that you go on, and you find out about what they're doing there and – and all over the world, and we were we were asked to do that, and we went there and we did that, and uh, we'll put their website and show notes there at rickandbubba.com, Fixed Point Foundation, if you're interested, uh, and you would also like to to do that, and or maybe you have a college student or a high school student that would like to go there and be part of the institute, and like I say, it starts, I think their first classes start now, this week, so so that's kind of cool, but but anyway, so we're finding out about that, and, and one of the things, though, I'll tell you, you know, that it was absolutely beautiful, stunningly beautiful. Uh, and the the tours of finding out about uh, you know Christianity in in France uh, was was incredible. Uh, it was uh, I thought a really good line was said to us by one of the people there that uh, was was you know you could tell was more farming blue collar yeah. and, and the quote was hey you don't judge us the whole country by Paris 
and we won't judge y'all by New York and Hollywood. How about that? <laughs> and, and so, okay, that's, that's fair. That's always That's a fair deal right so there. So where I was is where like we would be if we were French. Right. It would be our a little closer to, okay. to you know, these are blue-collar, hard-working. Rick, I like to hear the little boom-boom boom thing every now and then. Yeah. Yeah. How about later. this? Uh, hard-working to a degree. Yeah. Uh, the, um, <laughs> it's, now, it's harder, like harder working than Greece? Uh, well, that would be everybody right now. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I mean, I, <laughs> I, have, I have seen my teenage sons at the height of their teenager Ness work harder than the Greeks, right. but uh, uh. but anyway. So anyway, uh, so I'm there, and uh, there's all kinds of this kind of scenery. If you're watching on Heartland right now, where you're just up on ridges and looking out over, just right. I, I'll tell you, and I think you have Adler. Do you have the picture of the sunflowers? One of the things that you know, I've been a lot of places, and I got a lot of tales, but. Mm-hmm. But that's what the I, song says. There's a vineyard that we went to there. There's some grapes there. Of course, as a Baptist, I told them that, that I asked them if they could make grape juice, and that went over real well. But <laughs> uh, by the way, thought traveled to the you know all the way over there, and the guy who was at the vineyard that we watched how all this operated was from Kentucky. No really? Way. Yeah, he walks out and he sees uh, one of my sons has got a bluegrass lacrosse tournament shirt on. You recognize him? He was holding a basket. Right. He yeah, came out. And he, he dribbled. He drained a three. And he said, "Let's look at the vineyard." <laughs> But because uh, but, uh, he said I'm one and done. I'm yeah. like, I'm like, I've, I've come all the way to I've come all the way to southern France, and I'm meeting a, a vineyard guy run by a guy from Kentucky. That's right. And he's like, Yeah, I married a French woman, and you know, moved Lay here boom, boom. And, and learned how to Lay do. Boom, boom. You got it. And one always wanted to have a vineyard in the French countryside. I said, Well, by golly, you got it. <laughs> and uh, by the way, wine real complicated. Lot lot going on there. Of course, I hate to break it to the Baptists. It takes a lot more technology to make grape juice than it does wine. But anyway, so uh, the uh, so so that was wine will kind of happen on its own, won't it? You're right. So anyway, um, so we we saw that. But what I'm talking about, and, and, and I, my speedy baby, I sent you. One of y'all sent the sun the sunflower pictures, and you you drive by, and I'm talking about if if there's acreage and there is a lot of it, it's full of sunflowers. There's people farming sunflowers. I saw, um, guys, just so you know. I saw tens of thousands of sunflowers. Now, what do you what really? do you what do you well, farm them for? Well, that's what, what do you do? That's what, that's the seeds. That's what I was asking. Yeah, you. but what well, that, no, that is part of it. But it's the oil, sunflower oil. Oh. The, the oil. Aha. Uh-huh. And uh, well, let me look. I, I, I said maybe it didn't go through. I tried to send it to both of you, and I'll, I'll send another one. Here. Rick, yeah, I have I'm a lot of them. I just don't have that one. I'm trying to <laughs> picture uh, the weather and look at the latitude here on it. So what what was the weather there? Well, the weather, it, it is funny how the weather is important to all of us, but it really is the, because I that, that was one of my concerns. All right, I'm going to send this again to Speedy to you and to Emma. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the weather was hot because, uh, you know. Like what, what hot? Like one day it got nearly 100. But there is zero humidity, so even when yeah. it when it got dry to, heat, even when it got to a hundred, it did not feel you didn't sweat southeastern so hundred. Yeah, when yeah. I got back here, it was it was a lot Ooh, hotter than it buddy. was. Buddy, Rick, look just looking at the latitude, it looks like it would be uh, about anywhere from Chicago to the Canadian border. It's kind of about the same. Well, well, it was very. Right. But but here's what was kind of wonderful about it: when you got out there to have breakfast every I'm morning, when that. you got out there to have breakfast every morning, you almost needed a jacket. I mean, you know, you, cool had, you had you had those mountain breezes blowing, and then the the warm breeze would come off the Mediterranean the other way, you know, from the water. So you had the mountains right. wind coming one way, then you had off of the coast wind coming the other way, and that that really had a lot to do with the temperature. But it would warm up like you had to be very strategic about what you wore because you'd start out. Kind of cool, right. and then it'd climb into the nineties, which it wouldn't be the humid nineties, but it's still hot. You know, it's still hot. Yeah, and, oh yeah. And, yeah. And, then, and then it would wind back down to like <laughs> some nights we were watching movies there out under the stars, and it, you'd be back to it, hey, it, it's getting it's getting cool again. Right. And and you slept with the windows open. Nobody has air conditioning. Ooh. That hurt. <laughs> really? Yeah. USA on that one. Not a lot of air conditioning. I'll tell you what, we we led the world in a lot of things, most importantly, indoor plumbing and HVAC. We come back, I'll tell you what I saw in the future, and some of it is chilling. Speedy and the real Greg Burgess last week. Bubba, I know you came in toward the latter part of the week. Appreciate you guys. Um, it, it was rare. that This year was strange, our vacation kind of. There were some things I was trying to get off my list of things I needed to do, and they had dates that you had to adapt to them as opposed to them adapting to you. And so we moved it around a little bit this year, but it's worked out. So uh, back uh, from southern France, uh, 
the uh, <laughs> Fixed Point Foundation uh, was, was our host, and we thank them very much for, for bringing us out. Got to take Sherry and the two teenage boys. Of course, the older kids are all uh, still working, and they have the real, they're in the real world now, so it's very interesting to speak to them. Had some good conversations with my daughter yesterday. She's making some moves career-wise. But uh, we were there, and they start their inaugural this week, the Fixed Point Institute for Applied Apologetics. These are high school and college students who want to be able to be prepared to defend their faith uh, in the arena of Christianity, of course, being attacked everywhere you look. So let me now get a little serious. And it was one we did find the sunflower picture, by the way, mm-hmm. uh, we, of, of, of the, the sunflower fields all over southern France. To see those was, um, was really, I mean, that's all sunflowers. Wow. I mean, and, and it would go on for acres and How acres. How do they gather that? I don't know. I, I, that have a would sunflower be, picker? I don't know, but uh, it, it must be a good crop for the farmers there because, I mean, if, if you had some room, you had some sunflowers. Hmm. Hmm. So anyway, but on, on a little bit of a serious note, all right, first of all, one of the things that you got fi- you got to look at is you could not eat lunch there if you were out doing tourism. You had to factor in that your lunch would be two hours. There, no, you did not get out of a lunch in less than two hours. And, and you may think, well, that sounds kind of cool. And, and, and you did get to the point you just kind of slid. Everybody said, oh, that's the culture. That's the culture. That's their culture. Mm-hmm. They, they, and, and there's some truth to that. But let me tell you what else it is. The reason why in America is you're trying to not have a two-hour lunch because the business is trying to turn the tables because they're capitalists. Right. And, and it's the free market. And they're trying to make a profit. There, everything is, is about the government and about government hands out, handouts and government money. They don't have that capitalistic free market. Mm-hmm. They don't care if they turn the tables or not. So what? So, so you, it, it, and there, there were kind people. Don't misunderstand me. I, I didn't have the Paris experience in Southern France at all. These were very kind people. They were small town people. A lot of them were, you know, the, the countryside and farmers or else they were restaurants and stuff. And they were, and they could have been, they were nothing, but I had no bad experiences. Like you hear a lot of times that the French don't like Americans or whatever. That does not apply to this part of France. They love Americans. You know, here comes the tourism money. It's like the south of this country is a little different. Right. It really is. So I didn't have that kind of experience. However, I've still been to the future, though, because, see, it affects everybody. So the, I'm looking at the clock. Yeah, see, this is probably the time. So, so when I'm sitting there, there, there was this moment, and it was the moment of the week for me. Hmm. And I think for our family, it was our takeaway. There was a couple and, and two beautiful daughters that live near La Bastide, which is the place where Fixed Point does their institute, and they're there with apologetics and everything, this old French chateau that was donated to, to the ministry. So they're, they're, they live near there, and so a lot of people who live near there might do jobs there or try to get work there, taking care of stuff when groups come through and all that. Well, this woman had come, and she was talking you know, to them about maybe being hired to help out with you know, being an interpreter right. and things like that. So they, inv- he, she was invited to have dinner with all of us that were there from America. And we had met some great people from Tennessee and in and, uh, the Knoxville area that listened to the show and some other folks from, obviously, from Birmingham and then around parts of Alabama, Mobile and Fairhope. And so anyway, so we're all sitting around this big table having a big dinner, you know, socializing and we're mm-hmm. talking. Well, obviously, because everybody there, you know, have an interest in their faith, which would be Christianity. So even talking about the headlines and the things we were getting from back home, what breaks out? This scripture, that scripture. Hey, what about this? And what do you think about that? And we all start talking about, you know, from a biblical worldview. Mm -hmm. Well, the woman at the end of the table, you can tell she's kind of getting emotional. And so, you know, it was like she had a moment to speak. And she has her husband sitting next to her, and her two little girls are playing with the other kids that are there. And she says, we don't know what y'all are talking about. And uh, we said, well, what, do you, what do you mean? This conversation you're having at the table, we don't even know what this is. And, and so she starts getting emotional. And, I, and, 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 and you know, Larry's like, well, be more specific. What do you mean? She said, this is gone from this country. These, these conversations. And she said, y'all are, I'm now remembering some things like my grandmother used to say who went to church. But I, myself, and my husband, we don't have any idea what y'all are talking about. And she said, y'all have to understand, she goes, this is gone. And then you start trying to make it not that severe. You, what do you mean? You mean it's not as, no, no, no. It doesn't exist in the culture anymore. And then she said, the church is over. It's over. And then, of course, I started realizing the only churches that I was seeing 
were churches where I could buy souvenirs, I could eat at a restaurant, and I could tour the big place where they would have, you know, a worship mm-hmm. service or a mass, and they were beautiful buildings. Matter of fact, one of them was the largest brick structure in the world. Hmm. But you know what that area is right there? You know what that is? That's a tourist place. That's where you go get souvenir, eat, eat dinner. And that was a church at one time. And it was a church. Mm. So, so picture your big mega church wherever you live in America right now. Picture one day, and we're on the exact same road they're on, that tourists are coming through and they eat at a restaurant where maybe right now you have Bible study. Uh, they all go into the big worship hall and they go, they point to the cross and say, let me tell you what this is about. Or if you have any symbols in there about Christianity. I, mean, I know some of the old Catholic places have a, lo- have a lot more of that than you would have yeah. maybe a Protestant church. But still, there's things there that they mm-hmm. might go over the stained glass window and say, now this here is when they were laying out something called the fruits of the Spirit. Mm-hmm. What? What is that? And, and, she, and, and she gets emotional. She says, it's affected the whole culture. She goes, we don't have any standard of right and wrong at all. She says, like, nobody does anything for, you, for people. She goes, because you think if somebody wants to do something for you, what's your anger? She says, children don't know how to act. She goes, she goes, we don't even remotely. She goes, this no longer exists here. It's over. Now, I, this is not into the spear where you're out in some jungle right. where you encounter people who think that you're ghost or, 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 or whatever and try to kill you because they've never heard of the Bible. This is a first-world European country and the church is over, done, completely secular society. She says, you know where the people turn now for the answers? Not to God, not to the church, to the government. The government is the answer to everything. You look to them for, some, for them to give you something. That's where you go. The government's the answer to the problems, not this stuff y'all talking about. We don't even know what you're talking about. And the government has set it up that way. Sound familiar? Hey, it's, it's real, real serious what's going on in this country right now. Real, real serious. Mm. And uh, and we're we're on the exact same track. 